Hey everybody, how are you all doing? Well, not going on a hike today. <laughs> a couple reasons. First, if you saw my last video, I think that hike almost killed me. Oh, it's a killer. It's a killer. Do you remember that? I have a link down below uh, if you haven't seen the video. So a couple days later after the hike, the back of my knee, inside my knee, was really hurting bad. So there's some kind of strain or something like that. Feels better now, it's been one week. So I've been taking it easy on the knee. Um, also, my wife um, had to make an appointment today and she asked if I could pick up the kids. So usually uh, Wednesdays is the day I just have no appointments, no pickups, no nothing. I just go out, try to get out in nature and record. But today, I'm going to the grocery store. <laughs> Pretty exciting, yeah? So I'm just taking you on the journey here. I think today I want to talk about meditation. Uh, sometimes during meditation, I hear this quite often, there's times that people experience kind of a whirlwind of thinking. I've had this experience on meditation retreats, longer retreats and shorter retreats, where some sitting periods, you know, everything's clear. What you see is clear, what you hear is clear, you can see thoughts coming and going. And then there's some sitting periods where you're just lost <laughs> in a dream. I remember some uh, long three month retreats where the whole 30 minutes was just in a dream. You know, the head Dharma teacher hits the wooden stick for walking meditation. Bam! <laughs> you go, whoa, what happened? Where was I for, for the last 30 minutes? But it's not so important, right? What's most important is what can we do right now in this moment, right? The only time we can do anything is this moment. Now, of course, we can learn from the past or digest the past, but the only time we can make things clear is right now in this moment. During the last week, I've had um, some a lot of technical problems so I've been kind of upgrading electronics um, redoing my office to make it more productive and a place where uh, you know you kind of want to go so I've been doing a lot of different research on uh, ergonomics and chairs and <laughs> desk items and things like that to improve my situation. But one day, I remember I was doing a lot of research and I was really absorbed into all this research. I've had this experience when I used to play uh, music, where I would start playing music and just be completely absorbed in there. And just hours would go by. I remember my mom would be like, Jason, time for dinner. It's like dinner. I thought it was lunchtime. <laughs> so the other day I was absorbed in doing all of this research and kind of wasn't paying attention to the kids or my wife. And one thing about that, this is why I always encourage together practicing or together living, together action, is because people can reflect your own mind back to you. So I was absorbed all day doing research and, and uh, I kind of snapped out of it. And then I looked at my wife and I could tell her face, uh, I wouldn't say not happy, but you can tell something was going on there. <laughs> right? So what do we do when this happens? So it's just like sitting meditation. So if you're in a dream and you snap out of the dream, 
a lot of the times we check ourselves. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I've been practicing for this many years. Maybe my meditation technique is not correct or maybe my effort is not strong enough or maybe I'm not sitting enough retreats, right? This checking mind, we call it. We're always checking. But that checking mind only drains energy from us. So what we can do is just, what can I do right now? So how do I do that? The way I teach meditation instruction is, you know, we talk about the breathing and have um, some type of technique or phrase or mantra that maybe you're using. So when you notice you're in the dream, when you notice it, when you snap out of it, not necessary to check yourself, right? Most important is, all right, what's happening right now? What do you see right now? What do you hear right now? Just perceive everything very clearly. The Dalai Lama has a kind of interesting teaching. He said, if you want to know your past, look at your present condition. If you want to know your future, look at your present actions and speech. So we have a similar teaching as if you make this moment clear, then your whole life is clear. So it's not necessary to get it attached to what we didn't do or what we could have done. Right now, just do it. So when I noticed the other day, I was absorbed in this kind of research dream. Then I woke up out of it, and then I saw my wife very clearly. Then it's only, how can I help? That's another reason why today um, I have a little, not much time, so um, not going on a big adventure, since I'll be picking up the kids later and helping my wife with her situation. And also, we need groceries, so. Everybody wins. <laughs>
usually you would have the teacher and then monks and then nuns and then the lay people would sit. So this Korean monk was used to the style. But during this three month retreat, we had one of our teachers who passed away, but she was a, a Korean nun and also was a Jido Popsini. So in our form, the, she was sitting right next to my teacher who was Zen Master De Kwang. And the monk wasn't used to this kind of style, right? Usually the, the monks would sit by the Zen Master and not the nuns, right? So the way the seating arrangement was during this retreat is they had my teacher, then um, this nun, Yojisani, and then the Korean monk was sitting next to her. And uh, he was kind of a little bit disturbed by this. And it really showed during, after the sitting, right? So usually after we do our sitting session, everybody stands up, then the Zen master will walk out first, and then everyone else will follow in order. So when it came to the end of the sitting, this uh, nun stood up and started to follow my teacher, but then this Korean monk didn't like this so much. So he kind of cut, tried to cut in front of her, right? Because he's supposed to go first, <laughs> but that's not our, the way our tradition works. So, uh, so as he started to follow my teacher, Myojisini cut right in front of him. And you could tell he was a little surprised by this. And during the break, I could tell he was disturbed because I was rooming with him and he was just walking around the room, very disturbed. Then the afternoon session came. So again, the head Dharma teacher hits the signal that that's the end of sitting. End of sitting. Everybody stands up. My teacher starts to walk and then he tried to go behind him again. And then she cut right in front of him. <laughs> And he was very, very upset. In fact, he was so upset that he eventually had a meeting with my teacher in his room. And the meeting was about 20 minutes or so. And that evening, he packed his bags and he left the retreat. The next morning, I was working down at the Zen Center during the work period. And I overheard a conversation between my teacher and Miyoji Sinim. They were talking about the incident and what happened. And my teacher said, wow, this monk has been practicing for 30 years. And Myoji Sinim said, yeah, 30 years practicing down the drain. <laughs> so it shows you that it doesn't really matter how much practice you've done or how many retreats you've done, right? What, what she meant by this, what really matters is this moment. So as I said before, if you were in a dream for the last 30 years, or if you were clear for the last 30 years, doesn't really matter. What's most important is right now and this moment, what is happening. And also Zen practice means following the situation. So if you go to a different temple or a different country, you follow the situation there. In fact, Zen Master Sung Song would often say that if you follow situation, true happiness appears. But if we're only attached to our own situation or our own tradition, then it just causes dissatisfaction for ourselves and that affects other people as well. If you're sitting on the cushion and you were in the dream for the whole 30 minutes, not so important right now. What can I do? Whatever you do now makes the next moment. So if you make this moment clear, then the next moment is clear. Those are my thoughts for the day. If you have any questions or comment, put it down below. As you know, I try to respond to every comment. Sometimes I miss some and I'm sorry about that, but uh, I'm making an effort to respond to everybody who is participating and uh, engaging with these videos. So thank you all for your support and I will see you soon.